You want to learn how to safely transfer your sketches to watercolor paper? You always dreamed of making it big in your town. Hello, I'm Elisa of Elisa Laporte Art, and today I'm going to show you some tips and techniques to help you with your paintings. I'm going to show you how to transfer your sketches safely, how to stretch and prepare your paper, and how to flatten your paper so you don't damage your painting. First we're going to start with taping our paper. You'll need a watercolor tape and a masking tape. And we're going to measure out the size of our painting first so we know how large or small we want our painting to be. Next we're going to cut our watercolor tape to be about an inch wider on either side of our paper. This will secure the painting nicely, making sure we have everything we need before we get our paper wet so everything can run smoothly. We also want to prepare our water. It just needs to be cool to room temperature and I use a container large enough for my paper. For my larger paintings, I use a bathtub and just put enough water to submerge my paper. I also get my sponges all ready, using one for my tape and one for my paper. So residue from the tape doesn't get onto my paper. Now we're going to take our paper and submerge it in our water, making sure that it is completely covered. You're not gonna leave it in there for very long. Just glide it through, make sure everything is wet and then I let it drip a little bit to get off any excess water. And I will place it on my board, making sure it's straight, that there's no bubbles. Usually when you have a larger painting, you, this is more of an issue. And then I'm going to wet my sponge and just glide it over the top of my tape and then place my tape on my paper. You can see I am not putting it on the lines. I don't want that there. I need that border because you're going to cut the tape off. You cannot just take the tape off. You have to cut it off. So make sure there's a nice gap between that line and your tape. And then I just take a little bit of excess water and go over the top of the tape and that really makes sure it's secure. You don't wanna to add too much water to either side of your tape. Just glide over once and make sure that it's all wet and push out any bubbles. Sometimes little bubbles can get in there. So you want to make sure you smooth all of that out, but don't also touch it too much. It's kind of a delicate line between, you know, making sure it's secure, but also not touching it and fiddling with it too much. The second sponge I mostly use if I have larger paintings and the paper starts drying a little too quickly, I can take the sponge and smooth things out, keeping everything nice and clean. After you're all done, you're gonna wanna let this completely dry before you do anything else. Once our paper is dry, we can go ahead and add our masking tape and we will put it up against the measurements that we made. We want this little tiny lip or border, so when we mat our paintings, we have a little bit of an edge there that it'll be able to go around the painting and look really nice. Once completed, we are ready to transfer our drawing to our watercolor paper. We're gonna use this transfer paper and it's in the color graphite. And I've really had a lot of success with this. I like it a lot and it's not very expensive. I have many reasons why I transfer my drawings onto my watercolor paper. One of them being I have less of a chance to damage my paper. When you draw on it, if you draw too heavy or if you have to erase your pencil sketches, you run the risk of creating marks and damaging your paper, which may not look like it shows up when it's white, but once you put paint on it, those mistakes become very clear. So this kind of allows for an elimination of showing my mistakes and creating damaged paper. The next reason would be because it's kind of an insurance policy for me. That way, if I mess up my painting, I don't have to redraw everything out again. I have that sketch that I already used and I can always redraw it, which has come in handy when doing some 
commission work if maybe the person decided they didn't like the color or the way something was going I didn't have to start from scratch so it helped both me and them so it took me less time and I could just correct those few mistakes and then just retransfer it so it's a great way to save yourself some time some money and a headache now to transfer your paper I just cut out the size I need put it on top and tape it down so that it doesn't move and wiggle and then I put my sketch over top and using this burnishing tool I'm going to just trace over my drawing and it will transfer that graphite onto my paper. You don't want to be too heavy handed with it because you don't want to like put indents into your watercolor paper and nor do you want the graphite to be too dark because it can be difficult to erase if you have it too dark. I would say using a medium amount of pressure to transfer this drawing is plenty. And I, you did see me move the paper a little bit because I realized my paper was a little bit bigger than my actual painting size. So I moved it over, but usually I don't lift it and I was just moving it over so I had that tree in there but you just want to draw over it once and then you can lift to make sure you got everything, but then just take it off. You're gonna take your kneaded eraser and you're just going to rub over it because you don't want to have too much of that sketch showing through into your drawing, unless that's something you like. But I found also that this graphite paper can bleed a little bit if you're doing light colors. So I just like to get all that extra residue off of there. Now here's another painting I've done and I wanted to show you another way of taping your paper. This one is a five by seven and normally this is how I would tape this size of painting. And you're just gonna take it and slowly peel it away, keeping it as close to the surface as possible and just keeping it at that angle as you pull it slowly off. And I've never had any problems with this tape ripping any of my paintings. And I'll leave a link in the description below. After you've completed your painting, it's time to take off your tape. You'll need either an X-Acto knife or a box cutter. I had a box cutter for now, so that's what I did. First, I'm going to take off my masking tape using the same technique as I did before. And then what I'm going to do is find the edges of my paper. I don't want to cut on the edges of my actual painting because I don't want to risk cutting into my painting. So I'm going to find the edges of the paper and just cut that away and it'll pop right out. Make sure you're using a medium amount of pressure. You wanna cut deep enough that you're going to cut the tape, but not too hard. You don't wanna score into your board or risk damaging your painting in any way. Here it did get a little stuck so I just lifted the edge and then cut it the rest of the way and it worked out really nicely. After your painting is out you can use scissors or a paper cutter like this to cut away the rest of your tape. I love this way just because it makes a really nice smooth cut and everything is nice and even without worrying about cutting into your painting with scissors. Once that is done, your painting is ready to be matted and framed. You might be wondering how to remove the rest of this tape. That's the easy part. You're just gonna take your spray bottle and you're going to saturate your tape with water and then let it sit for about five minutes, just absorbing all of that water. I do this after I've taken my painting out just because I don't wanna damage my painting with any water getting on it. Testing the edges here, you can see it's not quite ready. You have to allow that water to absorb into it and it will soak up and remove the adhesive from your board. So it won't all come up at once, but as you can see, after waiting like five minutes, it's starting to come up on its own. And you'll have little bits and pieces that always kind of stay and that's okay. Uh, after you remove the bulk of it, you just take your spray bottle and spray those areas again. Let them absorb the water because sometimes um, where it 
has a double layer. It doesn't always get down to that second layer. The water on your board is going to be totally fine. It will not damage it. I've been doing this for years with these boards and I've not had an issue with this much water being on it. Use a paper towel to wipe up any excess water. I have multiple boards like this so I can be doing many paintings at once. So while one's drying, I can work on another one. In my materials video over here, I show you where I got these boards and how I had them all cut down, especially for multiple sizes that I work with. And I will leave that link in the description below. Now you're just gonna give this a good wipe and it's all clean and ready for your next painting. My third and final tip is how to safely flatten your paper after you've finished your painting. The first thing you need is a clean flat surface. Then I use a steam iron and I put it on the cotton setting since my paper is cotton. You need a clean pillowcase. I only use this for flattening my papers so it is very clean and I wash it every once in a while to make sure it stays clean. And then you will need some kind of weight. I use my husband's huge stamp books to put weight on your painting after you've steamed it. So what you want to do is lay your pillowcase flat on the surface. Take your painting and you want it upside down and you put it inside of your pillowcase. That's why you need to make sure it's clean. Okay, I'm gonna flatten everything. This paper is very thick. It's 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press paper, and it will not bleed on the other side as I do this because of the thickness of my paper. So then I have heated up my iron. Like I said, you wanna make sure it's where you can steam. The steam is what's gonna help us to flatten our paper. So we're gonna basically apply the steam or and heat to the back side of our painting, which will allow it to flatten back out. And then we'll add the weights to our painting and let it sit overnight. So you don't want to leave it in one spot for too long. And then you want to steam it. You need a fair amount of steam. And when you see it starting to flatten back out, and I've done this with very, very wavy papers that really were not flat and it still works. This will not work with a regular iron. You do need this steam. So it's pretty damp on this side, but not wet. You don't want it wet, just damp. Then you're gonna take another board and you're going to set it on top. This board is quite heavy, so it's already adding some weight to my painting. And then I'm just going to stack my books on top. And the weight will make it stay flat, so as it's drying, it will continue to lay flat. Now you don't have to have a big heavy board like this, but I do recommend putting a board before you add your books or weights, just to make sure everything stays even and flat. This one's a bigger painting, so I am gonna add quite a bit of weight. 
I would say each of these books weighs at least five to 10 pounds. So we got a lot of weight on here. And then we're going to let this sit overnight just to make sure it completely dries before we pull it back out. And then I will show you the results. Okay, it is the next day and we're gonna pull off our weights. And then we can pull it out of here. Just slowly bring it up. I can feel that the paper is dry and it is nice and flat. No bubbles or ripples in our painting. Question of the day, what are some techniques you would like to learn about? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and to click that bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos like this one on values. And I'll see you in the next video.